All right, guys. So we are recording this session, and this is session one of the Zap Bootcamp. Um, this will be the first in a series of four Zap trainings. I'm really excited about this to get Zap, you know, in front of you guys even more with, um, you know, a little bit more of um, traction to show you not only today what we're going to cover is, um, you know, basically taking it through for those who haven't seen Zap. I'm going to take it through, kind of give you a tutorial of everything Zap is, what it is, so you understand what Zap is. Um, we're going to take you in, show you how to set up your website today, and also how to set up a client's auto listing search. Um, what we'll then do is in our next session, we're going to cover more of the advanced features of Zap. Um, but some new additions to this program, uh, what we'll be doing in sessions three and four. Um, session three is going to cover our um, approach for a buyer's consultation utilizing Zap. Um, I think it's really important now with uh, today's current market to really be working with the buyers and meeting them face to face. It really solidifies the relationship, helps convert the buyers. But what it's also going to do is it's going to give you the ability to teach your buyers how to use your website to keep them off of websites like Zillow and Redfin and things like that because you do have everything they have. And then the fourth session, you know, one of the biggest things with um, websites in real estate is that when agents get websites in real estate, I see it all the time, we buy these websites that are box sites, but at the end of the day, um, realistically, you know, we have the issue of we need to market it now. So our fourth session is really going to cover social media and how to market your website to drive traffic to your website. So let's get started with today's session, which I'd like to start with by simply um, covering what Zap looks like. Minimize this. So taking you guys in, we're gonna start on the website first. And you know, one of the most important things in today's business is having a good agent website. You know, one of the biggest things is our online presence. You know, when we go to meet people, what are people gonna do? They're gonna Google you. And once you get your Zap website set up, it's typically one of the first pages that will appear in Google when they search your name. So let's start by taking you right in and just taking a tutorial of what Zap looks like. So this is your website. So every agent's gonna have your own website. Um, it's gonna look very similar to this, um, but what to keep in mind is that, oh, we're getting some background noise here is that we want to come in and every agent's going to have their own website branded and it's going to look and feel branded to you. So going through, starting off right at the top, this background image can be customized. I'm going to show you guys how to set all this up in a few minutes. You'll then have your search and that's probably one of the most important things on your website, which we'll come back to. You'll then have a little introduction to you in your website. This is just a simple intro. This is not your biography. I'm going to show you that in a second. From an agent's perspective, what you would see here in this next module, and I'll pull up um, another Zap website I have for an agent just to show you, you would then see your current listings and you would also see your sold listings. So that is something that you guys would have on your website. I don't have that because I don't compete with you, so I don't have any active or sold listings. So you would see those modules right here. Next, you'll have your client testimonials. Client testimonials are automatically pulled from Real Satisfied Surveys. So if you're using our Real Satisfied Survey program, your customers will receive this, um, the Real Satisfied, and then once they complete it and you approve the testimonial, it'll automatically post on your Zap website. And what it'll also include is a star rating here and under here, under your name up above. People love the star rating. You can also manually import your own um, testimonials as well from sites like Zillow and you know maybe some other sources you've been using a Google reviews or something like that you'll now come down to your biography which is your experience your credentials and memberships and your community involvement and one of the most important features here is we put it in bullet point reason being is a consumer will read about 20% of a paragraph about you yet they'll read 90% of bullet points so what we do is we put it in bullet points so customers will actually understand who you are and what you do to drive your point of why they should be working with you. The next module is something called properties I've toured. 
So these are basically simple property reviews that you'll have the ability to write reviews on, whether it's on your mobile app, which you have, or your desktop app through the back end, which we'll cover in, uh, later on. But what you do here is, is you simply, after you show a property, maybe you go to an open house, maybe you're doing a caravan, whatever, you can then come in and write a quick review. And this is a great tool for multiple things. And we're gonna spend more time on this in session three because, in session four, because this is one of the greatest things you can utilize in several different ways from a listing perspective, you know, showing customers where you work and what you do in a town, but also by, you know, covering in session four, driving traffic to your website. Because one of the best things is when you go on, you know, with a customer, even if they're never buying or selling a house ever again, if they live in, for example, Revere, when they see this link on my social media, they're still gonna click on and go to it because they wanna see what their local market is like. Even if they're never buying or selling again, they still want to know what the inventory looks like, what it's going for. So it's a great social media post and it's a great tool for listings. Local insights, these are just simple reviews on towns, you know, and it'll just help you with some search engine optimization, but it also gives you nice content for your website. So when you cover local towns by covering a local insight in here, it just so shows that you have confidence in that, in yourself, in that town. Coming back up along the right side here, you'll have links to companies you work with. Ignore the Puppaginos, I ran out of ideas. So I had to just use Puppaginos. I'm gonna shut this email down so it doesn't keep bothering us. So keep scrolling up. There's links to download your own mobile app, which I'll show you guys in a few minutes. You have your own branded mobile app for your customers to search properties on. You'll have your social media, links to your social media pages. You can have a YouTube video on the side here. You'll have your blog. This is something we'll cover a little bit in session two and also in session four. Um, we're gonna cover blogging. So we'll talk a little bit more about blogs later on, but you'll have your own custom blog on here. And then you'll have the towns you serve. We'll show you guys how to input that. And you'll have up to 21 towns in this block here. And one thing I want to mention real quick when it comes to areas served, if you cover a huge territory that may include more than 30 or 21 towns, spread it out. You know, if you work and put in Revere, you know, and you go down to Brockton, well, if you see Revere, well, we're going to assume you cover Everett, Malden, you know, those territories. So just spread it out a little bit if you cover more towns. So what I want to do next is give you guys a little view of what a search looks like and how the detail pages display. So when we hit search, they can do it just like they're searching on any website out there. When they come in, this pulls directly from MLS. They can sort by price or anything like that. They can save their search. By saving their search, this is going to send them automatic email updates. So if anything in this search they have here specific, they'll actually manually save it to their own account as well. So this is just the same thing as when you set up a customer's search for MLS, they're now creating their own search and saving it here and they will get email updates. And then every time they get an email update, it goes right back to your website. You'll see the details pages, you know, the search page here, very clean, neat. We got nice headers here for open houses. You know, we have the foreclosure tabs, contingent tabs. So that's all covered in here as well. And again, this updates regularly directly from MLS every two hours. So let's pick a listing here. We'll click on this one here. So when you come in and take a look at the listing, you know, the detail page is probably one of the strongest I've seen on any website. So just to scroll down real quick, you know, we'll see it's a featured listing because it's actually a listing listed by our company. That's what featured listing means is when it's listed by anybody under the Century 21 Northeast family. You'll get the basic info right up top, school district, things like that, neighborhoods. They can share it with their customers, Facebook and email. They can view the pictures different ways. And then you come down to the pictures. And I think this is one of the most important things because one of the biggest feedbacks I get when listening to buyers and sellers, um, when they're looking online at homes, is that the reason they go to a lot of these websites is for one simple reason, and that's pictures. So we give them nice, big, crystal clear pictures. So I think if you look at any other website, it'll compete with any other website. 
And what you'll notice as I scroll down, save the listing. So if they want to save it, this will track it. So if there's any updates on this property moving forward, they will actually get an email saying, hey, the price was reduced as an open house scheduled. You know, they'll send them updates on certain pieces. Request is showing as well, that'll go right to you. Virtual tours are pulled in here as well. So they can actually see a virtual tour on the listing if there is one in MLS. The open house data jumps right out at you. And then you get the description um, directly from MLS. I wanna take a minute to point out two big features right here, walk score and last check for updates. Starting with the walk score, for those who have not seen the walk score, when we look at the walk score, what it does, it's gonna give us a whole slew of local information. So I can see, you know, commute to downtown Saugus from this home, you know, it's car dependent area, things like that. But if I click on this map to my right here, what you're gonna see, it's gonna come up with everything nearby, including restaurants, coffee shop, bars, grocery stores, parks, school, shopping, entertainment, and errands. And I can even search what else is around the neighborhood that I'm looking for. So now they get an idea of what's around their house. So if it's important to be, you know, three minutes from a Dunkin' Donuts, they can figure that out. If we keep scrolling down, you'll get the Google Street View. This is a great feature. I'm sure many of you out there listening today have been at a, um, with a buyer where they pull up to the house and you have this beautiful colonial home and then to the left of it is a cemetery and to the right is a huge commercial building with a big dumpster to the um, right of their home and they're not even going in. Well, before we go out and look at the neighborhood, take a tour on Google Street View right on your website and they can tour the whole neighborhood, walk down the street, take a look around the corner and get an idea. The last piece is the travel time map. You'll see they can figure out how long it'll take me to walk to areas, bike ride, car, bus. But we're gonna select car. And let's say I go to work during rush hour. And I don't wanna commute more than 45 minutes to my office. These are all the areas that I can typically get to during rush hour from my home within 45 minutes. This is a great tool to show your customers. There is one other piece under here as well where I can actually see the, tra uh, the transit information. So I can see bus lines, train lines if there's one nearby. But if I click on the link or on one of the buses, I can see this one here takes me to Haymarket or Wonderland. So, you know, maybe I'm going into Boston every day so I can see that the bus right outside my house takes me right into Boston. So they can see all that and they can track out. And if I zoom out, I can see the whole bus line. The other feature, last check for update, 18 minutes ago. This is one of the best features to point out to your customers, and it's a great tool to get your customers to come to your website because let's face it, one of the biggest websites out there that consumers go to is simply Zillow. As agents, typically, we'll say that it's a bad word. Zillow is typically viewed as almost like a swear word in our business. Um, so when we think about Zillow, what's the biggest thing is that we get a lot of bad data. So the National Association of Realtors published a stat last year that on average, 18% of listings in a Zillow search are typically either under agreement or sold. So the great thing about your website is when a customer comes to your website at any time of day, they will feel confident that your website was updated within the last two hours. So if there's a photo change, a description change, open house added, that'll automatically be pulled into your website every two hours. As we continue to scroll down, customers can make private notes on a property. I like this house, might want to buy it. And now this will appear under my notes. I can see listing information. I get everything right from MLS. So you see we get a lot of detailed information from MLS. Under here, this is a new listing, but typically within 24 hours on your website, under each listing, under home value estimates, will be the Zestimate. The one thing Zillow has that nobody typically has is the Zestimate. That's the one thing they have on their website that nobody else carries. You now carry it. So there is no reason for a customer to go to Zillow now. Go into your website. You're going to give them all the same data and more and a better view. They'll see price history here. This will go back to 1990. 
So they'll be able to see any purchases or sales on this home since 1990. They'll see school district info, and if they click on the link, they'll actually see more details about each specific school. And they'll see a mortgage calculator, and they can play around with that. But the great part of this website is it's on one clean, easy to read page. So we're now gonna switch over, and I'm just gonna show you guys real quickly our mobile app. So bear with me while I pull this and switch over to my cell phone. Okay, so you guys should see my cell phone on your screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply open the mobile app here. So now you'll see on the mobile app, the mobile app is branded right to you. It's your name, your face, your brand right at the top. Simple page, they can do this recent searches or we can just do a new search. I can search my filters and narrow it down even more. But we're just gonna select a recent search to go quick through here. Nice clean search, you see the speed of it. And then when I click on a home, all the same stuff that I saw on my own desktop website is all in here. Every feature that we saw, including the walk score, which you see right here. As I continue to scroll down, I see the Zestimate right here. I can see price history and all that right in this app here. And then at the bottom, what you'll notice that stays stagnant on the bottom the whole time is request a showing. <laughs> so now anytime your customer requests a showing, you're getting instant notifications right from your website. And you'll get those via email, text message, and it'll also go onto your dashboard for Zap. So before we dive into the back end, I'm gonna open up the lines and see if anybody has any questions. Okay, so I've unmuted everybody. Does anybody have any questions on the uh, layout of the website? Nope, looks good. All right. I was just curious on the home estimate, what is that, what is the market analysis based off of? Is it similar to Zillow where they're using assessed values or is there any current market data for sales to put in there? So that is actually the, that is directly from Zillow. So that is the Zestimate. So that we're not running anything. All we're doing is importing the Zestimates directly from Zillow. So these are all done by Zillow. All we're trying to do is to give your website the power to compete with everybody else out there and giving them the features that are on every other website out there to keep them coming to you. So that is the actual Zestimate pulled directly from Zillow. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Any other questions before I mute you guys again? Rob, can your customers and clients get the app as well? Absolutely, yep. Yep, and you can share it. I'm gonna show you the link in a few minutes. Um, and I'm gonna show you some ways to share that link with them so they download your mobile app. Uh, Rob, quick question. So, um. Yeah. I changed my uh, background picture on the um, on desktop app, but also it didn't change. I thought that it didn't change on the mobile app. I'm not sure what you got to change. The mobile app, so the mobile app won't change um, because it's standard. It'll only change on your desktop app. Oh, uh, okay. So there's no other way to change it? Not on me? the mobile app currently. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. I see, no, just wanted yep, the mobile app's a little more stagnant. There's not a lot of customization right now because of the mobile features. So the programming's a lot different than just a simple desktop website. So it's more of a programming issue and how that would work because it's pulling from de separate data sources and layouts. Rob, it's Craig. Um, hey, Craig. Do we... Um have to like send the clients a link in order for them to um, attach to our website to, for our branding? Um, you can, yes. Just download the app. 
Uh, there's a couple different ways. So yes, um, you can share the app, you can enter them directly, and we're gonna cover a lot of that, especially over the next few sessions. So I think that's something, but yes, you can enter them. Um, they can download your app and register, um, but I always recommend you registering them because if they go in and register, they don't register in time, they may end up on somebody else's site because they need to be registered in to continue to stay with you. Yeah, great. That's what I wanted. Thank you. Yeah, so I always recommend for you to register them first. But you can have them, you know, if you want to post a link, we're going to cover that in session four. That's going to be more of like the social media marketing where we'll cover a lot more of that. Um, but basically what it is, is that they would um, be able to log into your website and register. But I highly recommend you registering them so you know it gets done and it gets done right. Great. Great questions, guys. Anybody else? Okay. So now we're gonna take a look at the back end, but while I have my cell phone on um, the screen, I'm gonna go in and just show you the Zap mobile app first. So this can be downloaded right from your Apple or Android stores by simply searching Zap. And then what you'll do is you'll sign in with your 21 online username and password. So when you come into Zap, you'll notice we're gonna take a look at the desktop in a minute, but your desktop and mobile apps look exactly the same. So just to run through your mobile app and desktop, you know, the mobile app while we have it open, what you'll see here is your requests, you know, requests for showings, requests for information, anything like that. So we'll take a look at that in a second. You'd then see a tab for new leads. So any new leads that come into your website and register, um, they would pop right in here as well. If you have any meetings, we're gonna show you guys how to schedule meetings in here as well for nice confirmations and reminders to customers. You would see all your upcoming meetings in here. And then reminders, and this will be a big part of our trainings, you know, elsewhere, really utilizing reminders to stay in touch with your database. When you go into a reminder, so let's start with that, just to guys show you guys kind of reminders. You see here, it's nice, clean, and easy. And this makes, you know, really doing, you know, your follow-ups very simple. So you'll see tab to the top, details, activity, you know, so for you from a re real estate side, I can see any homes recently viewed, saved searches, saved homes. And then I can see my history of notes. So you can see all my notes with this person I'm following up on. Mine are all recruiting, um, you know, but I can come in, read my notes, read my stuff, and then I can go back. And at the bottom, you'll see I can call this person right from the app. I'm not leaving my cell phone. I'm entering my notes right here. I use the text-to-speech a lot. I can email them from here, text message from here, and I can add a note about the customer. Couple other things I wanna point out in here real quick. At the top, you see the three little dots. So for those, uh, I forget who the question came from, but sharing your mobile app. Um, one of the best ways to do it, because the cell phone is where you can text from, you can't do it from the mobile desktop ver or the desktop version, you do it from the mobile app. So what I always recommend is when you have a new customer, simply sign into the mobile app click the three little dots in the right hand corner and you'll see right at the bottom, share my mobile app via text. So I'm just gonna hit that now cause this is gonna go, oh, we don't wanna email it to Shane, but you'll see there it pops up and there's a link right that the customer will receive right to your mobile app. Awesome. The other thing I wanna point out guys is the showing requests. So this is a great feature, um, you know, because now if you can get your customers to start using your website to request their showings, you'll be able to get some more details when they send it over. So if I request a showing, here's what comes in. So I can see, okay, it's 9 Central Place, Saugus, Mass. If I click on this little hyperlink here of the address, it's actually going to take me to the Zap website and kind of give me all the details. You know, so I can read about it. I can see the walk score. I can see all that but now all the information. So I can sit here and review the information and make sure it is a good um, spot for Rob. So you see all that here. So now I say, okay, it's a great property for Rob. Let's set up a showing. If I scroll down, here's the customer's info. So I can call, email, or text Rob, the customer. But what it also does is it'll pull in the listing agent's data. So I can actually call, email, or text Wendy, the listing agent, right from my mobile 
app. Once I confirm the time, now what I can do is I can hit schedule. And now I'll see reminder email and reminder text. So what this will do is once I hit save, what it's going to do is it's going to send Rob a confirmation and reminder email and a confirmation and reminder text. So what it's going to do is it's going to send them an email that when you set it up and what it's going to do is it's going to confirm you have an appointment Friday at 12 PM at blah, blah, blah. And it's going to include a link to your listing on your website or to the listing on your website. And then the day of the appointment, they get a reminder email and a reminder text message just reminding them of your showing appointment later today. Nice follow-up that you do nothing and makes you look like gold. Couple other things in the app real quick. At the bottom, you can see our you know, little four buttons, contacts. You'll see all your contacts. You can search right in here by name, email, or cell phone. Oh, someone's got them non-mute, non so we'll just kind of hit mute all again. Okay, everybody should be muted again. So now you'll see on the bottom, you know, through going through here, I can see all my contacts. And one of the great things is being able to search simply by cell phone number because listen, it happens to me, I'm sure it happens to you guys where we get a call and sometimes we're just not sure who's on the other line and they're already halfway through their conversation. So sometimes I have to sneak in here and just kind of type in the phone number. And there I come up. You'll have your business, so any requests for showings, any meetings, any reminders, and then any listings you have, you'll be able to come in here and do some cool stuff with your listings. And then one other thing to show you on the mobile app before we jump into the desktop app is right in the top left-hand corner, you see this plus sign. So this is where I could add a new contact. This is a great feature because now when you're out and you run into somebody, whether it's at dinner, you're at the grocery store, you're at picking up your kids from school, whatever it is, now, instead of writing down their info or having them text me or whatever we're doing currently, I literally am adding to my website right here. And now I'm setting them up and they're getting a welcome email instantly if I say send welcome email and they'll get a welcome email to link right to my website and add everybody. You know, they don't have to be a buyer or a seller. Anybody looks at real estate. So add everybody, you know, hey, do you go on Zillow? I know you're not buying a home, but go to my website. It's way better. The goal would be is to get them talking about your website to other friends and family because of how good it is. Import contacts. You can actually import your contacts right from your cell phone here. New property insights. We're going to cover that on the desktop, but you can actually write these property insights here, which is the reviews on properties. Set up showings, listing appointments, buyer consultation, reminders, and all that. And we're going to show you how to do it on the desktop. It'll go exactly the same in here. But you'll just kind of get a look at what it looks like here. So we're now going to switch over to our desktop. So we're going to switch over. Bear with me, guys. All right, so I'm gonna take you off mute, see if anybody has any questions on the mobile apps, and then um, I wanna make sure you guys can see my desktop. All right, so you guys are unmuted. Does anybody have any questions so far on our mobile apps? Uh, yeah, it's Craig again. Hey, Craig. On the mobile app, when you're sending those texts and emails, uh, those uh, pre-written or do you have to type them in each time? So those one would be pre, um, I'm sorry, those you would type in your own stuff. Okay, so great. these are just basic conversations. We're just controlling it from the app. And what I love about that from my business and for what I use it for, and I think it will work the same for you guys, the reason I love doing it through that as opposed to just doing it through my cell phone or my regular Outlook email is now when I look at that person, I have a record of everything I've emailed them, texted them called them on. I have notes on everything I've ever done with that specific person. So sometimes it's easier to, you know, we talk to a lot of people. Sometimes it's easier to put the pieces to the puzzle together. Great. Thanks. Good question. Anybody else? I have a question to promote it to um, anybody that you're working with prospects or, or whatever. 
what does this have that Zillow doesn't have? I mean, I know you mentioned that it's updated mm -hmm. more often and it's an 18% um, better rating as far as accuracy, but is mm -hmm. there anything that's on here that Zillow doesn't have that we would um, want to mention? The walk score for sure is not okay. something Zillow contains. Um, okay. I think the other big piece for you as the agent is that yep. it's a direct link between you and the customer. And I think that's the biggest thing, Diane, because when you okay. think about it, you know, when we go to Zillow and we've all had this issue where when we go to Zillow, you know, the customers don't understand our business as much as we want to think they do, even no matter how hard we explain it, the customer has a mind of their own and they don't listen. Um, oh. They're kind of like kids. Um, so, you know, so what we do is, is now by having them go to our website, we know when they hit request or showing or request more info, we know it's not going to, you know, Jane Doe over at ABC Realty, who's going to try to, you know, coerce your customer into going with them to see the property. So I think the biggest thing is on your side where you keep that retention to you and not have the ability to have, you know, some other agent steal your customer from underneath you. Because we know sometimes it's a sneaky business. You think? <laughs> um, a little bit. I'm not going to lie. We get it. So, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is it really, you know, it's getting everything under one umbrella for you. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Good questions, guys. Hey, Rob, this is yeah. Tom. I have a question, but it's not on the, um, the mobile app. It's on the desktop. Okay. Is that okay to ask now? Yeah, ask it. And if I'm going to cover it, I'll tell you to sit tight. So go ahead, Tom. <laughs> so I, I haven't really set up my, my website yet. Uh, I'm about to do that. Okay. Um, and I don't have any listings. Okay. Uh, yet. And okay. I'm wondering if I can take other agents listings from North, uh, Century 21 uh, Northeast and put them on my page. So it looks like I have listings. So you can put it under the My Listings module. That will only be your listings. But if you do decide, you know, you can absolutely use any listing. You can actually use any listing in MLS. So, you know, on my website here, you know, so I have 17 Eaton Circle here. You know, for example, this isn't my listing. But what I could do is I could take that link and promote it to drive traffic to my website because that's all MLS data. So anything like that is absolutely feasible but you won't be able to put them under that my listings module on the front page of your website. Okay. I have been told that one of the features that they are working on for a future release, um, they are going to be doing a nice um, big new release um, sometime in Q4 I'm hearing. Um, and what I'm hearing is that one of the features they will implement eventually is where you, if you don't have any listings, you can display office listings instead of my listings. So that is a future feature coming, but I don't have a time frame on that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, if we, yep. if uh, prospective buyers or sellers are out there looking at Zillow and stuff, is there a way that we are showing on Zillow so they can be steered to our website? Or is that something we have to do or on our own through Zillow? It's on your own. Okay. Yeah, anything promoting your website, Craig, is typically going to be something you do on your own. Okay. Yep, any agent marketing for, for your website is typically agent generated. And we, I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I can, I'll ask my question later. Go ahead. Okay, who else um, had a question? Can we, can we um, use our own? Um, that's what I'm looking for. DianeParker.com. Yep, absolutely. Yep, I'm going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Okay, thank you. And yeah, and Rob, quick question. So I think you s said this earlier, but I didn't, didn't catch it. You said that we could use um, other people listening, right? To like as a lead magnet, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, oh, okay. No, I just wanted to know because I didn't want to be using it and then get in trouble because of that nope uh, absolutely you can totally do that and we're going to cover that in session four one yeah and um i'm not sure if there's an option where like 
they say for like people not to comment on i'm not sure if it's like on the mls i heard about it. i'm not sure if we have that or not like the, the listing agents say that people can comment on the listing i'm not sure if it's that option i'm not sure what you're referring to okay then i guess it was maybe in another state Okay, yeah, yeah, there's no commenting on the listings in MLS, so I'm not quite sure what they're referring to. No, no, I just thought that there was like a box or a check box that they checked that, that they would say, like the listing agent would say, nobody can comment on this listing or something like that, right around those lines. Nope. Oh, I mean, okay. there's private remarks in MLS that won't pull to your website. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only thing I could maybe think that you're referring to. Probably. No, okay. Okay. Know. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I'd like to move on so we can uh, get you guys through this and out of here on time. Any other questions, though? No, All thank right. you. All right, perfect. So I'm going to mute you guys again. We'll take you off mute in a few minutes. Okay, you guys are all muted again. You can't, I can't hear you, but you can hear me. So let's go to our Zap dashboard. So now what you'll notice, our Zap dashboard looks very similar to the mobile app we looked at. So what we'll see in here, you know, same layout. You know, we'll just click on this. I love the new um, the request for info. I love doing that from, the, from the, um, the app. I think it's cooler, easier. But you could do it here as well, view. You'll notice same data, MLS data, all that stuff. And then I can schedule the showing here, right through here. Select the date and time and then hit save and my customer gets all that same stuff we talked about a few minutes ago. Reminders, same way. And then down the bottom, always watch this guys, this is the Zap News, so you'll get the Zap updates. Um, you know, recently their updates have been very minimal, it's been more working on stuff that you may not even notice, but kind of tweaking the back, back end, deep side, to make things work quicker and you know, dealing with little issues in there. So the updates have been um, very, easy lately um not a lot of huge new features released as it's been more of a um, this quarter was more of a let's tidy it up and make it work stronger but always keep an eye on this they usually re um, release updates at least two to three times a month let's go across the top here you'll have add you know i can add a new contact i can import my contacts as well You'll see here, I can use it through a CSV file. So if you don't have um, your contacts anywhere or you wanna import them, this sample CSV file, just to pull it up real quick. What this'll do is this'll give me a template to kind of paste my stuff in. So if you have a, you know, if you wanna export from, let's just say MLS, you have all your buyers in MLS, I can export that from MLS and then I would just copy and paste the columns under each appropriate column. And you'll see here, there's plenty of fields to copy the different things into. You'll have new agent insights. Let's take a look at these. So you'll have the property insights and local insights. Property insights, we simply type in the MLS ID, and these are those property reviews that display on our homepage. Right here. So what I could do is, you know, I search the property, this one comes up, I could type it in, grade house. I could then come in and select tags. These are optional. So these are just little icons, you know, I can say it's in good condition. You know, it's got a big backyard and it's got lots of light. Now I can hit publish. And that will now go right on my website that I could now share to my friends and family. So anybody who lives in near North, near North Kingston and wants to see it, they'll click on the link and take a look. The other option under Agent Insights is Local Insights. So these, these are just those simple reviews on towns. So let's just say I want to do Danvers Mass. Now what I could do is I could come in and give it a headline. Um, you know, great spot on the North Shore. I type in my comments. And then tags, this is where I can just kind of type in little 
um, keywords, things like that. So I could say Danvers, um, let's see, Liberty Tree Mall, you know, so on and so forth. And now I could, you know, just kind of create five tags. So this will help me with searches. So if someone's searching something on Google, let's just say they type in Liberty Tree Mall, I may come up a little higher. New meetings. So we showed you guys when you, um, when you get that request of showing, scheduling it, but let's say they don't do the request on your website. You can still schedule all your meetings. I could do a listing appointment. You know, so if I'm gonna go meet someone with a listing appointment, I could just type in their home address. So we'll type in my home address. The streets are sometimes a little funky because you never know how public records has them. being difficult for me today. <laughs> but let's just say it's 55 in Woburn. And I hit next. Now I'd be able to just type in the contact's name, select the date and time, and they're gonna get those confirmation and reminder emails and texts. Could do the same thing for just a buyer's consultation. So let's say I'm meeting them at Panera. I could do that right here and just type in Panera you know, and set up the meeting for there. And then we have showing appointments. And this is one of my favorite ones because I think it's just a great touch. And this is where, just like we showed you before, I could come in here and type in an MLS ID, find it. I could select my customer, search their name, select the date and time that I'm showing it to them. And then I hit save. And now they're gonna get these automatic confirmation emails and texts and reminder email and texts which just makes you look better to the customer and you're literally doing nothing. You'll have new reminders, you know, just to add a simple reminder. Could be anything. You know, maybe it's, you know, pick up dog food. You know, it doesn't always have to be real estate. You can use this to run your life as well. So I gotta, get, I gotta pick up dog food next, next Thursday and I'd save that. That now pops up in my reminders. And then new shareable link. We're gonna cover this in our next session. So we're gonna skip that for today. So now I wanna go in and show you guys how to set up your website. So if we click on your name up in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see a link that says my website. When you come into my website, we're gonna go through this and just show you how to update this stuff. Change cover photo. This is how I could change the cover photo on the top of my page here. It's like changing a photo in anything, choose file. I'd select it right off my computer and be all set. Right here gives you the dimensions and the formats, just so you know when you're uploading a photo. Your headshot, if your headshot isn't correct, you're going to email Ashley O'Neill, A O'Neill, a O N E I L at C two one N E dot com. And Ashley will update your photo across all websites. If it's not correct, the view my website button, this is simply going to take you to your website's homepage. The next sections we're going to stop and talk about for a minute. You're going to have my website URL and my mobile app URL. So right now, um, you know, like I think it was Diane that asked the question, you know, what do we do for our domain names? Well, this is why you want to have a domain name because these websites and Zap was built for strong search engine optimization, meaning when people Google you and Google stuff, you come up higher on searches. So what I can do is I can simply take this my website URL link and I would forward my domain here. I will have a separate video created on logging into GoDaddy and adding the domain forward. Um, I recommend if you do not have a URL, simply go to GoDaddy.com. I find them to be the easiest to work with. Their support is also great as well, um, if you're not very tech savvy. So they're a great system to use. <clears throat> a domain name, I think the regular price is $13.99, and that's per year. Then that's $13.99, not $1,399. So it's costing you basically $13.99 a year 
to run this entire website. So what I would do is I would simply go to uh, GoDaddy, buy a domain, and then all you're going to do is under the domain, you'll have an option for domain forwarding. You're going to take this domain and forward your current domain. So let's just say robdomico.com. I simply forward robdomico.com to this link right here. The other option we have is mobile app URL. This is the link that I would send friends, family, customers, prospects, whatever. This is the link that I would send them to download my mobile app. So if I text this to them or email it to them, as long as they open it on their cell phone, it's actually going to take them to the app store for their model. So whether they have an Apple or an Android, it's going to take them right to those download pages on their app store to download your app. So this is how you drive your customers to your mobile app. So I know that's probably a little complicated for some of you, so I am gonna take you off mute real there real quick and see if you guys have any questions. You guys are unmuted. Does anyone have any questions on that? I'm a little, I'm a little um, confused on the, the GoDaddy. So I see my website URL. So it looks like on the page I'm looking at for you, there's already a URL in here. Um, is is that something that you got somewhere else and plugged it in, or does Zap take that from the Century 21? So Zap creates this. So this is why we go, we go and buy a domain name from GoDaddy, Tom, because when you look at this, if I'm walking around, let's say I run into somebody at Stop and Shop when I'm doing my grocery shopping this week, and they say, hey, I want to buy a house. Great, go to my website. If I sit there and say, go to century21.com slash agent slash robert.domico at century21.com, they're not remembering a word I just said. So this is why we go and go to GoDaddy and we buy like robdomico.com. Now I go into GoDaddy and I forward robdomico.com just like an email. You know how when you have an email, like through the company and we forward it to your Gmail? This is the same idea and concept. So now when they type in robdomico.com, it automatically forwards to this domain name here. Okay. Okay. Sense? Yeah, I just haven't done it yet, so. No problem. I have to practice, I suppose. If you have any, you're only gonna have to do it once, but if you have any trouble with it, once you do it, just let me know, we'll help you get through it. Not a problem. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Okay, we're going back on mute, guys. Scrolling down, about me. Simply hit the little pencil and type your remarks. This should just be a welcome to robdomico.com. I buy, sell, rent, lease. I do anything you want, and I cover all these areas. Basic info, quick, short to the point. Because we, like I said, we're gonna write our biography below. Videos. All I need to do to post a video is I simply would copy a URL from YouTube. So if I go to YouTube and click on a specific video, I just paste the link from there to here and that'll go on the side of my page. Social media, all you're going to do is click each link. So I'm gonna remove my Facebook for now. But all you do is simply click the icon for the social medias you have. I hit Facebook, it's gonna log me in as me. And now it's gonna ask which pages I wanna use within Zap. I hit next. And now Zap's linked to me, to my pages. And I can go through the steps for each social media link. But you're just going to follow the instructions on the screen. Areas served. So this is where I can customize my areas served box right here. So what I do is I simply come in. If I want to add a town, let's just say we got a lot of random people on here today I saw. So we'll type in random. And now random's on here. Let's say I'm out of random. All I do is drag random to the top. One thing I want to point out is when people search you on Google, it's always going to come up as like, you know, 
Rob D'Amico. And then in the tag, it's going to say, you know, Malden real estate agent or something like that. Whichever town is your first town is the town you're actually going to display on your Google search. So you want to make sure that your primary town is first on your list. And all you need to do is grab it and drag it. If I want to remove a town, maybe I don't want Boston on there, I simply hover over it and click the X. You can choose whether or not you want to display your sold homes module. I always recommend display it. I think it's a great tool. These are the property insights and local insights I showed you guys how to do from up here. So I'd always do them from up above. I think it's easier. But let's say I want to delete one of those property insights. Let's say that home on Seville, I don't want to have that. I simply delete it right here. Scrolling down, this local SEO playbook is just a checklist for you guys, and we're going to cover more of this in another session. But this is just some ideas to remind you to build yourself out online. You know, link your Facebook profile to your agent website. You know, link your Twitter, link your LinkedIn. You know, even if you're not using these websites, it's just creating the pages on these different tools to have the exposure out there. You know, one of the biggest things, simplest things, is market your URL for your website anywhere. When I say URL, I mean that robdomico.com. Not that long one that we saw up above, but the URL that you buy from GoDaddy. Put it on your email signature. Put it on all your social media accounts. Put it on your marketing. Put it on your letters. Put your website everywhere. If you don't market it, nobody knows it exists. Resources, these are just links like we saw on the bottom here to companies we work with. So what you'll do is you'll just add the name of the company here. So let's just say I say, um, you know, Rob D'Amico Realty. You know, I can put in my website. And then I can select a category. If I don't have a category in here for it, I hit other. and I type in a category and that category will be added. I always add it to my navigation and I hit save. And now I've added that. Next is reviews. Like I said, you're gonna actually have them pop right in here. But if you are, you know, maybe you have reviews on Zillow or sites like that, all you need to do is hit view all testimonials and you can add them right here by simply clicking add a new testimonial and pasting it right in. Scrolling down a little further, we now have the part where we type in our biography. So this is those bullet points here. We see right here. So what I would do is I'd simply come in here and I would hit add new. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna only add one bullet point. You're gonna keep hitting add new. So maybe I say, um, you know, now I'm the GM. You know, so I put GM and I hit save. And now I can keep adding bullet points, but you want to create a new post for each bullet point. The last part is website tracking. We're going to cover this next week in our advanced session. So we'll talk about this section next week in our advanced session. So real quickly, we're going to see if you guys have any questions and then we're going to go through the contact screen real quick to get you guys through this session today. So we're going to unmute yet. You guys are unmuted. Does anybody have any questions on the website setup side? Rob, this is Gary. Can you do um, uh, team uh, setups on Zapier? You can. You'd have to create the team within 21 Online, so you need to email me on that. We create a team in Zap. Um, you know, but we'd want to talk about the teams just so agents are aware that their whole awards criteria will now just switch to a uh, team awards criteria versus an individual awards criteria. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we're gonna mute you guys back up and we're gonna head into the contact screen. Okay, so now if I go to my contact screen, which is gonna run through me, I have myself in here as a contact. Real quickly on the contact screen, I can do filters and that's gonna expand it tremendously here. We're gonna cover everything in a second, what's in here. 
But one of the things I'm going to show you guys is tags. You know, it's just groups. So let's just say I want to search, you know, um, anybody I have in Andover. You know, if I put that as a tag, pulls up. So I can search by tags, which I'm going to show you. So these are all the different searches I can create. You can also do bulk actions if I select everybody. So if I, let's just do a, uh, you know, so I have this here. So I'm just going to check off everybody. We're not going to do it, but I just hit this little checkbox to check off certain customers. And now what I can do is I can do bulk actions. Bulk actions, I could email everybody I have checked off at once right now. I could add a tag. You know, I could say, you know, Rob's people. And now that's in there. Their status, I could update their status from new, hot, incubating, cold, closed, whatever. I could share my website. I could share my mobile app. I could export everybody. I could delete everybody I've checked off. Or I could add a follow-up plan to everybody checked off. And then I could also add a new contact. I could single contact or import. So we're going to go right into me just to show you guys what a details page looks like. First, you'll see our tabs at the top here. Log a call, send an email, add a reminder. Log a call. Every conversation I have, I can search call scripts. We have call scripts in here. I can select the number I call. If I have multiple numbers, maybe I have a home and a cell. Did I reach them? Yes or no? This is a great tool, simple thing to check off. Because let's say I call a customer and I didn't reach him and I put no. Well, now the next time I call them, if I look at my notes from the last call and it was at 1030, well, maybe I try calling them at four in the afternoon this time to see if they answer them. I then type in my notes. I hit save. And this is all about a process. So the next thing that pops up automatically is I can either put them on a follow-up plan or add a reminder. I never leave this screen without adding my next reminder. So even if I just left this person a message, I put in a reminder, did they call back? And I put it for three days out. And I hit save and that will now pop on my reminders on my homepage. Send an email. I can send an email right through here. It's a full email signature. We're gonna cover setting that up in the advanced section next week. You can do attachments in here. Everything you can do in your Gmail or your C21NE can be done right through here. And then reminders are everywhere throughout this site. Under more, I can add a note. That's simply gonna add a note to their profile and that'll show up in my history. So I use this sometimes if I talk to someone, I just wanna note afterwards, or maybe I wanna throw in a little comment. Maybe I ran into them, whatever. I can just add a note. So I'm not logging a call or sending an email, but that's now added to my history down the bottom. There's note stored. Sign in as contact. We're going to come back to that. As for review, I typically never use this because you're using real satisfied surveys. Share your mobile link. This will just send this customer an email with your mobile link. Send them a welcome email to your website, or I could export them or delete them. Next is tags. So these are basically like group lists. So, you know, maybe I say sphere, you know, top 100. You know, but what I also use this for, and you see some funky stuff in here, is I start to save personal traits. Um, most of you guys know I'm a big Brian Buffini guy. Um, Brian Buffini is all about the personal relationship. So what I do is I track different conversations and track things like who's their favorite author, what's their religion. Now it's the difference between saying happy holidays versus Merry Christmas or happy Hanukkah or so on and so forth. You know, what's restaurants they like to eat at. Now I can talk to my customer like I'm talking to everybody I know personally. So to add a tag, I simply type something in here and it's added. Contact info, I can hit this pencil and add more contact info. Account info, basic stuff you guys can read through afterwards. You know, quick dates, dates I last contacted, the date added, all that. Their personal details, I can put in their home address, their birthdays, purchase anniversary date, their job titles, you know, what they're looking for, social media stuff, and then I can add, you know, spouses, kids, pets, whatever, right under here, and I can keep adding them. 
I keep scrolling down and now you come to the zap score. The zap score is what's going to show us what they're doing and how often they're doing it. So I can see that, you know, Rob looked at two homes this week, four last week, so on and so forth. How many times they log into my mobile app, how many times they view my website. And this tracks about 12 different features on your website. You'll then come down and you'll see the average price, bedrooms, baths, square footage, and style that they look at on your website. But then you also see how much searches they're doing in each town they're looking. So 46.2% of all Rob searches are done in Saugus, Mass. 256 in Woburn. So now you know what your customers are searching, so you know what they're looking for without even talking to them. Search activity, how many homes, what homes have they saved, what searches have they saved, and what homes have they recently viewed. I can see all that by hitting view all. Again, I told you reminders are everywhere. Here's reminders. Home value updates. Now, this is a great tool for everybody in your database, even if they're never buying or selling a house ever again. All I do is I hit add home value updates, and I type in their home address, is mine, I'm not gonna add it because I already have it in there, but then I just simply select it and hit save. And now you'll see it appear right here. And what this will now do is every single week, your customer will get an email from you with a um, nice details page showing them any homes that were listed or sold in their neighborhood. And it covers a half mile radius around their house. New listing alerts, we're gonna come back to this, but you'll see new listing alerts and auto listing alerts. So these are ones you would set up. These are ones that the customer sets up. So you can see if they set some up or if you set them up. You then have follow-up plans. Follow-up plans, they're all email versions in here. So you'll see some will have the word automated. So this is like an, a new leads type, you know, and what you'll notice is they're all email bodies. They're not a graphic image because a consumer is more likely to read an email body versus a graphic image which they, may, which they may delete. Automated plans will automatically go out. You have to do nothing. You'll also see plans like a closed buyer follow-up plan. So for example, if I click on the closed buyer follow-up plan, you know, so 60 days after they're added, you know, they get, hi Rob, I hope everything's going well with your new home. What have you been up to? Well, now that's gonna prompt a response because we all know that a buyer looks at this and the first thing they're gonna do is, oh, you gotta come check out my yard. We got it all set up for the summer. When we sell a house, we're part of the family. But the thing with this, where it doesn't say automated, this will then pop up into your follow-ups. All you'll need to do to send these bulk emails is simply check a box that says complete. Because what this will do is, is let's say for example, we don't wanna look silly. So, you know, let's say this buyer here is on my buyer follow-up plan and I haven't seen them, you know, but then randomly the day before this email is gonna go out, I run into them at a restaurant. We're having dinner and there's that customer. Well, if they get this the next day, they're gonna know that it's automated. Now, for example, if I ran into them, I just don't send that email. Or maybe I change the email and say, hey, it was great to see you last week or last night. This way here, you don't look silly with these automated emails. To set them up, all you do is hit select. You'll then come down, any customers that, you know, let's say they, you know, request a showing, you'd see all that stuff right in here, so you'd see all your showing requests. If I hit view all showings, mine's a dummy test account, so you'll see a bunch of showings under here. So these are all the properties I showed Rob. So the big thing I'd look at Rob is I'm showing you way too many properties. We gotta buy a house, man. And then you could add any transactions or listings that you do with that specific customer. So let's show you guys how to add an auto search. And this is the last thing we're gonna cover for today. So we're almost done, bear with me guys. And then we'll take questions right at the end and wrap up. But to set up a new listing alert. So for those real briefly, for those who are using MLS right now, most agents in this business use the MLS. This is basically what you are driving them to. So when you set up a custom with MLS, MLS alerts, this is what they're getting. This stinks. But when you go to our website, 
and you send them those new listing alerts, this is what they land on. No comparison, not even close. So how do we set these up? What we're going to do is we're going to hit more. We're then going to select sign in as contact. We're now signed in as the contact. What we're going to do is we're simply going to do a search. But what I would do is I would hit more filters and I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit to create advanced search. The reason we're gonna to go to create advanced search is because when I search on the website right here, this is only for one town. We typically, when setting up buyers, we're setting up multiple towns. If you are setting up a buyer search for one town, you could complete that right here. Set in all the data, and then you'd hit search, and I'll show you how to save it in a minute. But typically, we're doing multiple towns. So I could come down to create advanced search, and I could select any of these options. But we're going to click city today. Now when I come in here, I will see all the towns. But what I can do is I can simply type it in here. So let's say I want to put them in Danvers. So now I add Danvers to his search. I would then come back up here and continue to add, and I would delete Danvers, and then I would add Peabody. Again, I would come up here, delete that, and now I can type in Beverly. So on and so forth as you need to. You can then scroll down, you can put in your price range, I can just type it in. Bedrooms, baths, all that stuff, style, property type, you know, what they're looking for. So you can go through all this data here later. It's basic stuff that you see right in MLS. And once I have all my data in here, I now hit search now. So now my results, because I didn't really narrow it down, you'll see it searched all those towns, my price ranges, all that stuff, and I can start to customize it. Maybe I say, okay, give them three plus bedrooms. Well, now it's down to 203. What I could do, so now to set up this search, so now this is what I want to set Rob up on. All I need to do is I hit recommend search. I can name the search. It's going to always put in the towns and the price, but I could say Rob's home search. The big key is making sure email Rob when the search has updates, make sure that is checked so they get an email. I could then say, hey, Rob, I set up your auto search. Call me when you want to buy. And then I would hit simply email this recommendation. That person is now set up for auto searches every day on that search criteria. So with that being said, let's take you guys off of mute for final questions. Okay, you guys are unmuted. Final questions. I have a few. Go for it. Um, so how often will they receive alerts? On MLS, you can set it up so that they receive new listings immediately. Yep. Or you can set it up for just once a day or every two hours. Is there an option to change how frequently they receive new listing alerts? Right now there is not, but that is part of a future release. Right now it's once a day. They get them every 24 hours. Okay. But they could, so real quickly, just to kind of attach to that answer, what they could do is they could sign into their mobile app and get the updates instantly. It'll email them once a day, but they could sign into their mobile app and just view their saved searches, and that would give them instant updates. Okay, that helps. Um, can you see what the buyers, what they have viewed, what they're looking at? Yep, simply under the um, profile. If I scroll down in their profile, if I scroll down just a little bit right here, recently viewed homes. Okay. Um, 
Can you see when they had their last login? So we yep. know. Yep, if we scroll right up to the top, that's right under this quick dates, last login right here. Perfect. Um, do you get an alert when a new person signs up? Yes, you, you do. The agent? Yep. Yeah. yep, you would get an email and a text message and you would also see them in your dashboard on the home page as it loads slowly. New lead mm -hmm. right here. Okay, great. Um, does the calendar, so when you set up a showing, can this calendar link to your Outlook? Um, it links to your Google. So it would link to your Google calendar right now. So you'd have to have a, a separate count. Uh, does Google, does, would it then, would, wait a minute, how do I ask that question? <laughs> so then can you tell Google to connect with Outlook? There are some functionality to that. It's a little deeper, Diane, um, but we can talk about that um, once we get you set up in here. There is some stuff that we could set up to sync those as well. Um, but that's, you know, I don't want to confuse you guys on here, but it can be done, yes. Just a little okay. bit more of a, a technical dive. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Cool. Great questions. Anybody else? Okay. So, um, quick question. The you just recommended recommended them a search. How would you edit that search? Let's say that they wouldn't want a city, or they want a different price range. Yep. So what you would do is if you just went into, uh, you would go through and sign in as the contact again. And then mm -hmm. what you would do is, is when you sign in as the contact, like you can see on my screen here, under my account, I would hit save searches and I could then edit it from the save searches. Panel. Oh, okay. Guys, if you guys have a radio on, if you can either mute yourself I just turn the radio in the background down. Okay. So that's where you could edit it is right here. Any other questions, guys? I hear someone talking, but it sounds like you're a mile away. <laughs> Questions? All right, questions going once, questions going twice. <laughs> questions are over. So that is our session for today, guys. So this has been recorded. We'll get this posted online um, and we'll post it right on our pages as well so you guys can log in and view it to, because we covered a lot here today. So you'll be able to log online, view this and kind of you know, set up your website as you listen through it again and kind of pause and play it through our YouTube channel. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm glad to help you guys in any way possible. So with that being said, everybody have a great weekend and I uh, look forward to seeing you all again on this call next Friday to uh, continue our setup of Zap. Thank you, Rob. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. You too. You as well. Enjoy. Thanks. Bye-bye.